going to work well. What was that? Now there is a tent pad here, which I guess I could have put my trailer on, but I didn't for one simple reason. I don't think I'd actually appreciate ants in my pants. <laughs> or anywhere else for that matter. Oh, this is so good. Beautiful day, sunny. Um, I just had a shower and I didn't have to have a shower inside my camper and clean up, you know, the curtains and all that stuff I usually do. There's hot showers just over there, so it's somebody else's mess to clean up. No, I didn't leave a mess, but it was nice to have a nice hot shower. And the big thing I noticed as soon as I got here was the air. It's dry here. I have been in humid air for months and months at a time certainly this whole trip it's just been constant humidity and even you know from south padre island which is only about two and a half hours away it was 88 to 100 percent humidity there by the ocean here it's only 33 percent and you really feel it i'm not going to have any issues whatsoever with condensation out here the trailer is drying out it's not going to smell anymore ah i love it Falcon State Park is on the north side of the Falcon Reservoir in Texas. While the southern shore is in Mexico. It's a popular spot for fishing. As well as boating. But for people like me, the attraction was the birds and the wildlife. Which begs the question, are there any falcons in Falcon State Park? I had hopes when I saw this bird, but when I slowed the video down a little, it was clearly an osprey. But a magnificent bird nonetheless. Well, my campground is right here, the Black Bass Loop. But the first thing I want to explore is just down the road, right here, the Butterfly Garden. There was lots of interesting plants and lots of birds in the bushes. But perhaps January is not a good time for butterflies. There was a butterfly sign at least, and near it was a fountain, with one very lonely flower. But the fountain had oranges fastened to the branches. And the bees just loved them. Finally, a butterfly arrived. Apparently quite thirsty, but a little nervous around all those bees. He finally got a taste of nectar and wasn't going to give up his spot. Watch what happens when a fly tries to butt in on the left. Whack! And another bee. Whack! I guess he just doesn't like to share. 
So even in the cold months, you can still find butterflies here. But I was curious as to why the garden was fenced. Surely it wasn't to keep the butterflies in. Nope. It was to keep the butterfly eaters out. And this bird loves butterflies. Now I've seen roadrunners in my other travels, but never so many. At Falcon Park, they're as common as robins are up north and are quite comfortable around humans. Yuck, that one tasted bad. They're like Mother Nature's pest control. It is kind of neat how they fluff up their feathers. Just like the cartoon. But do they really go beep beep? Listen closely to this one in a tree. I would have thought that was a dove call. Tonight, it's totally vegan. I've got two kinds of potatoes, big red potatoes, and little baby red potatoes with some uh, vegan mayonnaise and pepper, uh, green beans, some hummus, and avocado, and lots of pepper. Healthy. Mmm. And tasty. At dusk, a red fireball glowed in the trees. And as it dipped below the Sierra Madres, a song could be heard. Nothing says good morning like a steaming cup of coffee with a hot bowl of oatmeal and the sweet call of a happy bird. Well, I think it's time for an update on the performance of the Slimerado, my Chevy truck, because uh, some may remember that a few videos ago, I started a little bit of a challenge. I believe that I can get better gas mileage at least once with this pickup truck while towing than I would with the Jeep. And the ongoing bet is I believe I can get better than 15.1 miles per gallon. Now, uh, the last time I reported this, and let me just, whoops, I'm losing the rock. Last time I reported this, uh, it was a couple of videos ago at least. Uh, yeah, I had only achieved between 11.1 and 12.2. And I wanted to update date this, uh, the last video, but it was so windy and I was on the beach and the waves were really loud. So now you can hear me, except for this little bird that's chirping in the background. Here's all the receipts since, since then, my gas receipts, and uh, I did the calculations. What did I get this time? Well, the first one, and where was that? Uh, just before Pensacola, Florida, 12.4 miles per gallon. So we're already better. 
then it went down to 11.9 in Lacombe, Louisiana. 12.1, uh, uh-oh, it's going down 12.0. Uh, you know, 12.5, uh, there's, oh, there's one real bad one here. Uh, where was this? Uh, Kingsville, Texas. I, uh, I was fighting a headwind, 10.6 miles per gallon. Ouch! However, <laughs> they're not all that bad. 11.2, the best one is right here, and it is, you ready? 13.1 miles per gallon, so that's good, I'm improving. Uh, and the funny thing about that one, that was when I was traveling through Houston. I was on the freeway and I was actually going 70 miles per hour, not the usual. I tried to keep it around 60, but I think it was, you know, maybe there's a bit of a, of a wind behind me, but maybe it was all those, uh, those cars and those trucks were sort of pushing me through the freeway, improved my gas mileage. I don't know, but that's really good. I think my range for this this section is between 10.6 as the low and 13.1 as the high. I'm getting there. You know, a couple more miles per gallon and I'll have won, but uh, it's kind of tough. I'm still in the race. That's the main thing. And it's for charity, by the way. It's not, it's not going in my pocket like these receipts are. Well, Falcon State Park has a ton of trails, which is why I got my hiking boots on. Now, although it's January, it's actually very green here. Um, and this is where it goes from the, the humid east to, uh, to the dry west. Uh, now we're into more of a desert scrub. Everything wants to harm you, by the way. <laughs> There's thorns and, you know, thorns on the cactus. Even the, the mesquite tree here is very thorny. Look, but don't touch. But it's that coolness plus the dry air. It just makes it perfect for a hike. You know, when it gets to be, you know, 100 plus in the summertime, you probably don't want to be here. But in January or February, it's pleasant and there's so many things to see. Although the desert cottontail is pretty common, one thing you might not always see is a sun halo. Now the other thing about deserts is uh, you gotta pace yourself. Even though it is the end of January and it's reasonably cool, when you find the shade of a tree, sit down and relax and just get that cool down. You don't want to get too hot. You don't want to get dehydrated. And uh, although that sun's a little foggy today, you can still get a sunburn. There's so many trails to explore here. However, if you look closely, there are little trails right across the big ones. These are the roadways made by ants, their own personal freeways across the desert sand. And those sands also reveal tracks. Could these be from javelinas? Near the reservoir, I spotted something in a tree. It seemed to resemble a big bat, but on closer inspection, it wasn't a bat at all. This was a colony of bees. 
I felt it was best to keep my distance. Also gathering was this flock of red-winged blackbirds. To those that are observant, the park has many surprises. One thing that's really impressive in this area are these exposed cliffs by the water. Um, it's not just rock. These are actually fossils. Fossil seashells. You know, it's like this is a, uh, a seashore from millions of years ago. But there's so many. It's incredible. Some rocks were crystallized and had a bright sheen. Well, look at that. Looks like a fossilized spark plug. Must be from Fred Flintstone's car. Ah, but he used his feet, didn't he? So much for that joke. After watching a bird admire the sun dog, it was time for me to head back to camp. Well, I'm just catching up on a few comments and emails. I did uh, release a video this morning, so always have to check out, make sure people are behaving. But uh, one more note, and I really didn't want to forget this. There's one thing you really, really, really have to be aware of if you camp in a place like this. It's not the javelinas, it's not the snakes. The thing that'll really get you is the cell phone. Because this is right on the border. That's Mexico over there. Never ever let your cell phone pick the signal. Do it manually. Make sure you've got something like AT&T or T-Mobile, whatever you normally use, because if you don't, it's going to pick up the signal from Mexico. And uh, I, got, I got flagged uh, for just after a few minutes that I had a $300 bill because uh, I wasn't paying attention. And yeah, it drifted across the border. Um, I'm okay. I talked to my provider. They said, you know, they'll take care of it. But um, the, uh, the people at the front there, uh, they told me somebody had an $8,000 bill. They weren't aware of it, so be careful. There's nothing that will destroy your trip more than a huge bill, so uh, don't trust this little guy. Well, the sun's just gone down. It's quiet, it's a beautiful night, and uh, I think I'll be leaving in the morning. So it's time for me to give my review of this particular campground. I am in Falcon State Park in Texas. It's kind of halfway between Brownsville on the coast and Laredo, right on the Mexican border. Um, and it's a beautiful area. Um, it's semi-arid, uh, lots of uh, brush. There is a uh, reservoir over there, like a place you can get a boat or a kayak in. Very peaceful. There's tons of trails around here, and they're all very easy to walk. Lots of wildlife. Uh, if you like birds, it's a really good place. The Roadrunners, if you're a Roadrunner fan, <laughs> this is definitely the perfect place to see Roadrunners. And of course, if there's Roadrunners, there's got to be coyotes, and there are. You can hear them at night. 
Uh, it's, it's very, I feel very safe here. It's very well laid out. It's clean. I mean, the spaces are fantastic. I mean, look at this. I've got this shelter. If it should rain and it didn't, I can still, you know, sit out here and uh, get that fresh air. And I think there's something for everybody. If you got a big RV and you need the hookups, well, there's a section for that. If you want cabins with air conditioning, well, they have that as well. Or if you're a cheap guy like me, you know, you get a place like this, you know, there's no hookups, but there is a washroom over there that has hot showers. Again, really, really clean. I think they've done a really good job on this place. Um, as far as price goes, I paid, you ready for this? $10 a night for this. $10 a night. There's no taxes. You give them $10 and you're good to go. There is a fee for getting into the state park. It's $3 a day, so it's actually $13. But if you have a Texas state pass, you don't have to pay that. Value-wise, it can't be beat. This is really good value. And, uh, you know, it's not overrun. It's quiet. I mean, it's January. But for somebody from Canada, where I know it's really, really cold up there, it's t-shirt weather in January. Weather was great. I really enjoyed it. I love the walks. I, I like the fossils. Um, what can I say? I love this spot. I'm... A Falcon State Park, to me, is a two thumbs up. You know, two, two thumbs up and two fingers up. It's like, yeah, great place. Check it out. It's easy to find, by the way. I had one more sunset to admire before retiring for the night. In the morning, a rabbit wished me well, and the osprey hurried off with his breakfast. Well, I really enjoyed my stay at Falcon State Park, but it's time to move on. So I hope you enjoyed this video, check out my others as well, and I hope you'll follow me on the rest of my travels. And just as I was exiting the park, I finally saw a javelina. And it was in a campground called Javelina Run. They train them well here. <laughs> 